day everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Teacher Eyes TV. discussing the basic food preparation techniques that we apply when we prepare ingredients at home. Now, question here is, why do we really have to apply them correctly when we prepare our ingredients? What do we benefit out of that? Answer, we prepare these ingredients correctly because we want to cook them correctly and with ease. Another is, when we prepare them correctly, we are able to draw out the real flavor of these ingredients once they are combined into the pot where we are cooking them. Now, another question would be, do you help prepare ingredients at home? Do you apply these techniques correctly? For this episode, I will discuss with you also the proper ways and the reasons of these techniques that we are talking about technique that I will discuss with you is beat or beating. When you say beat, it means to make the mixture light by lifting it over and over. Usually, we apply beating when we beat eggs, when we make scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs, or omelets, or we use beating when we prepare ingredients for baking. We can use whisk or fork when we have to beat ingredients. We can also use rotary egg beater for that. But with more ease, we can make use of electric mixer when we beat it. So normally when you beat ingredients, you beat those that are, have thick consistency so that after beating, you make its consistency lighter. What is that? Beat. Next, we have blend. When you say blend, it means what? Combining or to combine two or more ingredients until one cannot be distinguished from the other. Basically, we make use of a blender when we blend ingredients. And this is used when we prepare smoothies or fruit shakes or vegetable soups. That's what you mean by blend. Next, we have stir. What does it mean? It means to mix a liquid ingredient using a vertical and a circular motion of the spoon. It is done in a slower motion, unlike beating. Well, when you say stir, we stir liquid ingredients that already have light consistency like evaporated milk or fresh milk or soy sauce or any other ingredients similar to their consistency. Next, we have marinade. It's another common technique that we apply, especially when we cook barbecue or teriyaki. So, when you say marinate, what does it mean? Marinate, it is a process of soaking the food in a kind of dressing or sauce for several reasons. What are the reasons for that? Number one, we marinate because we want to enhance and add flavor to the food. Number two, we marinate because we want to make it a little tender, you know, the ingredients that we soak into the liquid. Third, we also want to prolong the life, preserve the food or ingredient that we want to marinate. And number four, we want to alter the color of the food that we are marinating, depending on the ingredients that we add to that. Now, very important that we have to take note about this process is that we marinate the food or the ingredients at least 30 minutes before it is cooked so that we are able to make that food absorb the ingredients that we add to that. Uh, well, it is better if you marinate it for one hour or maybe overnight for better flavors. That's marinade. Next technique, we have dredge. What is that? When you say dredge, it means to coat a solid food with powdered ingredients before cooking it. Now, what are these examples of powdered ingredients that we can use to coat a solid food? One example of that is breadcrumbs. Another one, flour or cornstarch, or sugar, or salt. Question here is, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to coat this solid food with all these powdered ingredients that I mentioned? Several reasons. Let's talk about the first reason. We dredge because it makes the food crispier. For instance, you will fry chicken when you dredge it with breadcrumbs. After frying, it becomes crispy. Number two, it holds the shape of the food. Example, when you are cooking meatballs, 
Then you form the meatballs and roll it into flour before cooking it or frying it. It prevents the meat and, and the other ingredients to crumble. So it holds the shape of the food. Number three, reason for that, we prevent the food from sticking into the pan. You know, one problem in frying fish is that it sticks into the pan depending on the kind of frying pan that we are using to cook that. Well, to prevent the problem, you can or we can dredge a small amount of flour into the fish before it is fried so we prevent it from sticking into the pan. And the last reason, number four, we dredge because we want to add flavor to the food. For example, banana peel. We are all aware of what banana peel is all about. So we dredge it with brown sugar before we cook it. Therefore, the brown sugar makes the banana even sweeter. It adds flavor. Another technique, we have blanch. What do you mean by blanch? It means soaking the food into hot water and then followed by cold water. Or pouring hot water into the food followed by cold water. Basically, we blanch leafy vegetables. Question is, why do we have to do it this way? Hot water first and then cold water. Let's give an example. Let's say you will prepare Caesar salad or vegetable salad. Lettuce is actually not boiled. We blanch it first with hot water so that we can kill any pathogenic organisms that may be found into that lettuce. And then it's followed by cold water. Or other people, they make use of ice cold water for that. For the reason that they want to preserve its crispiness, its vibrant color, so that it won't be soggy or too soft when it is served. That's blanching. Then we go to the next, cream. Cream means to rub or mash ingredients against the side of the bowl. We use back of the spoon if you don't have a masher or an electric mixer to do that. That's cream. Basically, we cream butter and sugar when we bake or we also cream other ingredients like chocolates or any other soft ingredients at that. Creamy. Next, we have great. What does it mean? Great means shredding an ingredient into finer pieces using a grater. Examples of ingredients that we grate are cheese, chocolates, or sometimes vegetables or fruits depending on the recipe that we are cooking. Great. Next, we have sprinkle. What do you mean by this? Sprinkle, it means to scatter ingredient over the food. For example, we scatter cheese on top of a pizza or we scatter salt and pepper into the food that we are cooking to add flavor. You have to take note that when you sprinkle, you have to do it from the center working your way out in order to assure us or assure you that you are actually distributing the ingredients evenly. Second to the last, we have base. What do you mean by this? Base is a process of moistening the food while it is being grilled or baked. The mere reason why we base an ingredient that is being grilled is to prevent it from drying out and to retain its flavor. So when you grate, you know when you do broiling or grilling, you have a sauce with your brush on and then you have to put that sauce on top of the meat or chicken that you are grilling or baking. That's actually what you mean by basting. To prevent it from drying out and to enhance and retain its flavor. Last, among all this, we have flake. In Tagalog, when you say flake, we mean himay or himayin. So when you say flake, it is uh, separating the food or ingredient into smaller pieces using the hands. Himay or flake. And these are just some of the basic food preparation techniques that we all have to know when we prepare and cook our food at home. I hope that you learned a lot of techniques and tips in this video that I shared with you today. And I hope also that you will like and share this video to everyone that you know. PLE teachers, home economic teachers, students studying this course, and those who just want to learn the basics of cooking, please subscribe in my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell for more videos and updates. Once again, this is me, Stafwe, for Teacher Ice TV. I'll see you again in our next videos. Thank you for watching!